Okay, welcome back to Mr. Turner's art class. I have a very uh, interesting project for you today. I want to talk about the uh, Native Americans, uh, Native American art, particularly the uh, Northeast Pacific Indians. Um, well, Native Americans, excuse me, you don't want to call them Indians. Their actual designation is Native Americans, so we are not talking about people from India. We are talking about the indigenous uh, group of Indians that were here uh, in this country. Uh, since it's November, I just want to talk about their culture. Normally, in school systems, we are we're usually we talk about the Plains Indians. I think that's what uh, everybody in this country, when they think about Native Americans, uh, it's always the Plain, Plains Indians, you know, Apaches, stuff like that, you know, uh, Blackfoot in, uh, Indians, things of that nature. But you know, there were other groups. There's a lot of them, you know. Now, the ones on the north, uh, the northwest, uh, they produced a very unique form of art, you know, called totem poles. And you're probably wondering what's a totem pole. And it does have something to do with these things right here. But let me just show you. You've seen these before. These are totem poles. Okay, they're a group of animals stacked on top of each other. They're usually they're abstract. That's why they look real weird uh, to you, you know. Uh, which being abstracted means that it's distorted. It's it doesn't quite look like it's from nature, and that's the whole point. It's a little bit more visually interesting, you know. That's why when people see totem poles, you know, it kind of just sticks in your mind. You know, these have a lot of meaning to them. Uh, with regards to maybe either family, maybe telling of different stories, different legends, uh, different tribal groups, you know, tribe they basically mean in their families and stuff. Sometimes they're markers, sometimes they're warnings, sometimes they're telling stories or legends. So these are very unique. And to be honest with you, they are not just used by the Native Americans in the uh, the Northeast. Honestly, uh, totem poles can be found in Africa. They could be found in uh, the Pacific uh, Islanders. You know, they honestly they can be found all over. You know, and usually this is the the usual characteristic of a totem pole. They are usually some kind of animals that are stacked on top of each other. So, what is your project? what you're going to do is you're going to make a simulated totem pole. What I have here are four animals. I have a dog, I have a snake, I have a cat, and I have an eagle. Now, you're going to take a sheet of copy paper. This is going to be real simple. You will take that copy paper and you're going to fold it. You, you really want to make sure that you have your creases. So have good creases because I'm going to need you to interlock these. Let's interlock. Now, in the middle of this pipe, you're going to draw an animal. You're going to pick an animal that has some meaning to you. Uh, the, t the kind of totem pole you're going to do is going to be con called a quest, uh, crest totem pole. Crest meaning like a family crest. You know, like some families um, have like some kind of uh, symbol that means something. You know, if you think about um, your school, uh, a lot of times you'll see like a little shield and it might have like a little key or it might have a little trophy or something alongside or an animal or something of that nature. Those are crests. Okay, that's the school crest. Well, families used to have crests. Well, the Native Americans, they have a crest and their uh, crest was usually the totem poles. So it would be these animals that would represent something with regards to their family. So like in my case, okay, I have a dog. So what does that represent? Loyalty. That's what you're going to do. You're going to end up writing the word on back. Whatever that animal represents to you, you're going to put it on the back of that paper. We have a snake. This is a cobra. 
A lot of people are scared of snakes. I'm not. In most ancient cultures, they believe that snakes, because they were reptiles, they represent wisdom. So you would write, again, whatever that animal represents, you're going to write it on the back. I have a cat. Cats are very good about taking care of themselves. So I put royalty, because I see myself as royalty. Black king, to be honest with you. And I have my eagle right here, my warring eagle. Eagles are predatory birds that can fly the, uh, very high in the uh, very high in the sky. So I believe they represent am uh, ambition, ambitious, because I am ambitious as a human being. I'm always trying to succeed. I'm always trying to be the best at anything I do. So even in my art, I try to be the best and be recognized as the best. So. Yes, therefore eagle. Now, the thing about I like about the totem poles is like there is an order to the animals when they're stacked on top of each other. Okay, I'm just gonna draw some on here real quick. Now, as far as the order goes, each animal is there's a hierarchy. So, in other words, uh, it goes by from the top, the the highest animal order of importance. So. Uh, at the bottom is probably the lowest uh, of importance. So that's where we get that little saying like uh, you the low man on the totem pole. Have you ever heard anybody say that? Basically it's saying that that person is not that important. The lowest uh, animal on that totem pole is not important. So not to say that this this snake is not important but he's gonna be my low man. Then I'm going to go to my cat and stack the cat on top. Then I am going to, I think, my dog. My dog is going to be on top of the cat. And then I am going to take my eagle. My eagle is going to be on top. Uh, on, on top of the dog. So I will have my animals stacked. Okay, and that is what you're going to do. You're going to draw these animals out, and then you're going to fold the paper, and then you're going to stack them on top of each other. And then you will have your simulated totem pole. Now, as far as the animal, okay, I'm going to draw one more. Okay, uh, let me see. What animal? So what do I think rep can represent me? Okay, I am going to make a, a crocodile. So I'm just going to show you all just how to draw one, one, one animal. So let's see. So I'm gonna make a crocodile. So let's start off with this kind of shape. So it's gonna be a crocodile. So we will do that. Have yeah, that shape. Well, then again, let's not do that. Let's not do them like that. I'm going to show them this way because the animals can be sideways. Most of these animals I have, I've drawn, they're facing forward. Let's make one that's going to face sideways. So that's what we're going to do. He's going to turn sideways. I'm going to make my crocodile. So i got my crocodile eyes. I'm going to have his mouth. Crocodiles have those big old smiles, so let's do that. They're always smiling because they're always thinking about biting you. And then we're gonna do that. I'm gonna come down that way. So my crocodile gonna have some teeth. Let's see. Let's go that way. There. Do like that. I don't want to be a mean crocodile per se, but so I'll just do that right there. So he's just always looking. Or maybe let me just go that way. So he's looking at you from that way. You can see he's cheesing. There we go. So we have we have our crocodile and. Uh, Let's see, what else can I do to him? What else can I do to my, my crocodile right here? 
Okay, I know they just give them some little gums. I'm gonna do that right there. I'm just we're gonna do his underbelly. Let's just do that from there. So draw them little lines. Okay, so we got a croc. He has a nose. And okay, so I'm just gonna go over him. I'm using a sharpie right here, so y'all can use what you got. Let's do that. I'm gonna get his teeth. His pearly whites. Little side of his mouth right there. And you're probably wondering why would I draw a, draw a crocodile and or a alligator? I guess I would say it's an alligator. If it was a crocodile, I would put the little ridges on the back. But he's an alligator. He's a Louisiana gator. He's a friendly gator. So, we got our little crocodile right there. And, you know, I can go back and I can put some little... We do like that. So he got scales. I don't have to be that detailed, but... So he got some scales. Okay, so... You take your picture. You basically, you're going to bend it. And then we're going to open this up. You're going to slide that on the inside right there. Make sure that's in there. So you see that? Make sure that's good and good and smooth. You can decide like how, what size you uh, you want that to, to be. And now I have to decide on why, what does this represent for me. And because it's a reptile and because they have been around for probably thousands of years I mean these things are almost prehistoric okay I feel as a person that I am adaptable I can adapt to any situation um, I'm not afraid of change of any kind I just so I think I'm adaptable so that's what I'm gonna put on here I'm gonna put that I that this animal represents adaptability because they have been around since the stone uh the stone age or whatever adaptable now once i have that technically i can choose where do i want to put this uh in the order of things you know do i want them sitting on top of that eagle up there i'm just gonna put them up there for now Let's see if i don't knock it down so there you go that is my totem pole that is what I want y'all to do. So you're going to pick the animals that you like. Okay. And then you will write on the back what those animals represent to you or your family. You will create your totem pole. I would say color them. Just make it look nice. And just turn them in. You know, and just have fun doing it. Of course, in the classroom, I am going to work with each one of y'all like on drawing some animals uh, based on your grade level. Okay, these right here, I would say about elementary, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to expect more out of my middle school kids. So this is, this is right here. I would say this is about elementary level slash that's, uh, beginning of element, I mean, middle school. So I'm definitely going to expect a lot out of my middle school kids, my seventh graders. So, okay, but that's the, the project. You're going to create me a totem pole. You're going to represent the uh north uh west pacific indians you're going to create a crest totem pole so that is going to represent your family or yourself so you will design that you will design put an animal on there pick whatever animals you want they can be insects animals insects whatever whatever you like and then write on the back what they represent 
and then put them on top of each other, take a picture of it, and turn it in. Okay, so I hope that uh, helps. I uh, hope this is an interesting project. I hope you enjoy, and um, I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. All right, y'all take it easy. Bye.